Um, uh, backflow prevention. My apologies, uh, Helen's in a meeting with uh, other operational managers uh, uh, in the region uh, talking water at this point in time, so um, you've got me to present this paper. Um, I would like to uh, just make a slight alteration and remove the second um, clause of the recommendations. Uh, it's been deleted up there on the screen, as you can see. And um, the reason for this is that we are making very good progress, uh, both with the uh, drinking water assessors and with the um, uh, program of works um, in the water to get a compliant water safety plan. And we would like to make sure that this program of works was accelerated as fast as we possibly could. We are doing some work in it, as you probably are aware, uh, particularly in the um, catchments where there are um, <coughs> low risks, but we've got no chlorine in there. And so there are some of this work that we are doing uh, significant uh, work on it. Um, if you um, note this today, it just enables us to uh, accelerate. We will be notifying <clears throat> all the people out there with a letter so that they are aware of the works that Council is going to do and the reason for those works and how it fits into the overall water safety plan delivery. So uh, we would just like to uh, progress it as quickly as possible uh, so that we're hoping that all of the risks align as quickly as we can and we get sign off by the drinking water assessor. Oh, probably should be more appropriate, probably it's the Ministry of Health in Wellington that will sign it off probably rather than the local drinking water assessor. Um, I cannot, um, you're obviously also aware that there's the new regulator that's been uh, set up at this point in time. And so what we're hoping to do is we will get, uh, we, you know, we would like to be the first water safety plan uh, signed off in New Zealand um, under the new regulations that came out from the Ministry of Health. Uh, but I cannot actually predict what the new regulator might do in the future. So um, we have got that little bit of uncertainty. Uh, in reality, though, I imagine it will be two years or three years prior probably to him uh, or his office setting up a full regulatory regime for drinking mm. water. So this is important work to be done and we'd like to accelerate as fast as we can. And that's really just uh, so you notify, uh, are aware of what we're intending to do. Thank you. I mean, I, I know that um, a number of us have obviously taken a deep interest in this matter because of the association with the signing off of the water safety plan, of which this is one element, um, and the ultimate removal of the chlorine from our water, which is, um, remains our, our, our target. Um, Pauline, did you have a question? Well, I just uh, might not be able to answer it, though. Do you have any idea the time frame for this piece of work? If, should it pass um, today? We believe we could um, deliver this uh, probably within a 12-month period. Uh, right. We are going to prioritise it, so we may not need to complete all of the work. Uh, I think you've got to recognise that most properties have backflow prevention on them. It's a matter of whether the backflow prevention actually meets the risk and it's a matter of which risk profile you use. There's a number of different um, uh, standards out there at this point in time. So what we are doing is ensuring that we uh, put attention to the highest risk and so that the risk over time will reduce pretty quickly. Now we've just got to get to a point where the drinking water assessor believes that risk is appropriately low. So, But we are hoping we would get through and would be um, state of the art backflow prevention over in, within 12 right. months' time. And it also states in the report that some of the backflow uh, prevention devices on certain premises are there, but with a change of use, they are no longer appropriate. So, do we have anything in, in, in place now that, if, should there be a change of use, that the backflow um, devices are automatically upgraded or required? <laughs> What we're doing is we are intending to put in a backflow device that's appropriate for the highest level of risk yep. that you could use that building for. Right. 
it is an approach that Tauranga has used and used very successfully. So if you change, a good example is um, you could have a commercial building uh, in town here and it could be an office at the moment, but then it could get converted to a hairdresser mm -hmm. and the risk changes on backflow from a hairdresser or it could be converted to a dentist. We would not know about that. So what we're doing is having a look at the zoning of that property, what it could be used for, and then putting in backflow prevention and recognising um, we also, once these backflow preventioners, they need a yearly warrant of fitness uh, for them. So we will know um, whether the property is, um, uh, has changed over a year, but it may be 12 months before I know that, but it won't be a problem because we will have put the appropriate level of protection in. Right, yeah, thank I th you. I think that's been the, 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 the um, issue for a lot of people that they haven't understood that there is no mechanism for the council to know because if it's a permitted use, they can change the use without applying for resource consent. Um, and because they don't have to apply for resource consent, we don't get to look to see whether the um, backflow prevention measures are sufficient for the new use. And so this will automatically put in the highest level of backflow prevention for the highest level of use. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's good, yeah. good stuff. Precaution Thank you. Well, um, with, Aaron. Yeah, just for public knowledge, though, with the exception that we license all hair salons and food premises and bars, so we would have a record of quite a number of these businesses. Just saying. No, but the, 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 because the use wouldn't change, you wouldn't trigger a review of their backflow prevention. But it would be in if, the council's if all of computer the, no, system. No, we don't. Well, we if don't keep a record? A, if it is a use that didn't require a higher level of um, backflow prevention, you wouldn't know what it was before. It didn't trigger it. And, and probably, Aaron, I've pulled out a couple, you know, for example, food premises do need a licence, and I've just pulled out some examples, but there's a whole range of different uses. Look, so I can't remember a tattoo. Um, uh, Brothel you know, doesn't. Look, I'm sorry, the list's about yeah. as long as my arm. Um, of different uses that could create a risk to us yeah. uh, and so not all of them need to be notified to us and that's the point I made. So we will take the worst case scenario and put in the appropriate backflow and when you're doing it at this point in time it's um, the actual incremental cost is not that significant. No and it's actually a, a resilience factor anyway exactly. um, you know from a resilience point of view across the city but each individual premises owner is not up for a considerable amount of um, contribution. Yeah, you'd like to move it, um, Pauline, seconded by Melanie Coker. Is there any discussion? That prevented people doing the work themselves if they got in ahead of council. What we will be doing is inspecting every property. If they have got a backflow preventer that is close to the boundary, we will not be putting in a second one. The issue that you've got under when they changed the Building Act, and I'm sorry, it, it was a long time ago, they they changed the, the backflow prevention so that the backflow preventer had to go closest no, to no, the... Source. Yeah, no, I get that. No, I'm just saying yeah. that if, if someone realised that they didn't have one that was appropriate, um, could they choose to put one in before you got there, like before you... Would Anyone can look at their own plumbing and do whatever they wish That's to. Right. I would say that they yeah, just yeah. have to get an independent qualified person uh, because yeah. they are the only people that can put them in and certify that they meet requirements. So, and close enough to the yeah. boundary and all those kind of things. So yeah. as long as we've got some good clear information on that so that people could choose, yeah. we're just not taking away people's rights to do their own work if they choose to. We're just... No. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, reason that's, that's just checking. the reason for removing the second no is, oh, is the simply, timing issue is and, simply yeah, because yeah. of timing, yeah. and so we don't want people sitting around waiting till after no, that's right. everything's been yeah, done and they say, "Oh, well, actually, I can't wanted. do it after all." Yeah, Aaron. Yeah, so if that is the case, why don't we just leave in two? No, no, because that's that's right. that's writing to them and saying you have an option of. Whereas if they're approached, they're all going to get a letter. Right. And if it says, you know, if you, we're going to we're going to come out and inspect, because it, it's an inspection plus a delivery side. So because we know there's going to be the odd company that come forward and go, oh, we can do it for half the price of the council. 
Yeah, yeah. that's fine. And we are looking at ways that people could pay it off so that they don't have to actually meet the capital cost immediately. Uh, that was a discussion that we've had with Council, and so there will be ways that we could potentially integrate into their rates. Um, we are looking at those options at this point in time. Do you, you don't need a, Do you need an authorisation for that, or can you do that by way of delegation? Yes, by delegation, my understanding. Right, that's fine. Okay, good. Um, and um, all right, so um, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any debate? Uh, Pauline? I'd just really like to thank staff for all the work we've done on this and these issues with our infrastructure are emerging. I think we're getting a handle on most of the work that needs to be done. This is a big piece. Um, I think the advantage of our council doing this work is that uh, we can bulk buy um, and, and, and get all the bits and pieces um, cheaper and quicker. And so it's, I encourage people to actually support the council doing this work. Um, it'll be done quickly, and it's not just for the water safety plan and achieving that, but for me it's the right thing to do, to have comfort that we've got good infrastructure, that our people are safe from any contamination coming in from these businesses inadvertently and uh, contaminating our water. So this is a, for me this is another big step towards having that safety in place. So thank you. And thank you for that comment, and I'll pass it on to staff. There's been a lot of people in behind the scene technical, regulatory, um, it's been across the council kind of approach, so I'll pass on that thanks to them because there has been a lot of work done by a lot of different groups within council to try and pull this together into a deliverable. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to yeah, sorry. <laughs> invite you to speak um, during the debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Uh,